This is your WLAK Daily News Roundup for Lake Air, 107.5 FM and 1260 AM in Amory. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Tomorrow is primary election day in Wisconsin. One of the races to watch is the Republican primary in the 8th Congressional District, where Donald Trump is endorsing Tony Weed. This race is all about how important is the Trump endorsement in a primary in Wisconsin, especially in the Green Bay area. Wisconsin politics editor J.R. Ross says Roger Roth and his supporters can afford a lot of TV ads, while Andre Jacques is busy campaigning door to door. What wins out? Air power? the Trump endorsement, or this kind of credibility that Andre Jacques has. One of the big races to watch tomorrow is the Democratic primary in the 3rd Congressional District. Rebecca Cook has been campaigning for two years and has the most money. Katrina Shanklin has the backing of party and union leaders. Can she break through, even though she has less money than Rebecca Cook, who has been a great fundraiser, but she doesn't have that same kind of like support with some of these unions and those people who turn folks out. With politics editor J.R. Ross speaking with WISN TV's Upfront, Eric Wilson is also running in the primary. The Wisconsin Technical College System has a new leader. Layla Merrifield has been a fiscal analyst for the Wisconsin Legislative Fiscal Bureau and has also worked as a policy advisor for the technical colleges. Her new role is to oversee Wisconsin's 16 technical colleges. Merrifield starts her new job September 9th. Communities appear to be slow to apply for money to fix up rural roads. The Wisconsin Agricultural Road Improvement Program aims to fix roads damaged by heavy agricultural and logging traffic. The program has given out $50 million this year, and the deadline to apply for the next round of $100 million is the end of September. There are new standards for meat to carry the USDA certified organic label, but farmers have until the end of 2028 to comply. Seth Milstein is a reporter for Sentient Media. There were various procedures that were just flat out banned in the new standards. Tail docking of cows and gestation crates and farrowing cages for pigs or toe clipping chickens. Milstein points out the standards affect only farmers who volunteer to have their products certified USDA organic. Wisconsin wildlife officials expect more deer in the woods this fall. The Department of Natural Resources released its annual deer forecast last week. Mild weather last winter helped more fawns survive the cold weather months. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. A Wisconsin man will set out on a walk from Superior to Lake Michigan this week. According to a Northern News Now report, Greg Studzinski is walking 500 miles from Lake Superior to Lake Michigan to raise awareness for people battling mental health and substance abuse issues. He's calling the walk the Lake to Lake 500 and anticipates it will take him nearly 20 days to complete. The walk will also serve as a fundraiser for a community center in Milwaukee that helps residents dealing with substance abuse and mental health problems. Rice Lake native Kenny Bednarik's Olympics are over, with one silver medal coming back to northwest Wisconsin. Bednarik raced in the 100, 200, and 4x100-meter events at the Paris Olympics, winning the silver medal in the 200-meter dash. He finished 7th in the final seat of the 100-meter dash, and on Friday, the Team USA 4x100-meter team was disqualified after a bad handoff between Bednarik and Christian Coleman. The Canadian team took the gold medal in the 4x100-meter. Duluth's new arena football team is taking home some hardware following their first season. According to a Fox 21 report, the Duluth Harbor Monsters became the first ever Arena Mania champions on Saturday night with a 46-44 victory over the Iowa Woo. Overall, the Harbor Monsters finished with a 7-3 record in their first season. Repeating as champions will be even harder for the team next year, as the league will grow to include new teams like Eau Claire and Arkansas. This year's season featured only four teams. The Minnesota Department of Transportation is announcing more temporary lane closures on I-35 and the Blatnick Bridge this week. According to the DOT, there will be single lane closures in both directions on I-35 between 27th Avenue West and Garfield Avenue on Wednesday. The Blatnick Bridge will be closed from 6 a.m. on Thursday to 6 a.m. on Friday. Department of Transportation officials say the Blatnick Bridge closures are necessary to complete the final bypass connections that provide direct access from the bridge to I-35. A Duluth Farmers Market will host Minnesota's National Farmers Market Week celebration. According to a Northern News Now report, the Lincoln Park Farmers Market was chosen to host the event, which members of the market say is a great honor. Officials from the Minnesota Farmers Market Association said they wanted to hold this year's event in the northern region after being in Winona and the Twin Cities. They also say they recognized the hard work that the Lincoln Park Farmers Market has put in to serve their community. 
The Wisconsin Department of Transportation and Governor Tony Evers have announced $174 million in state funding for road projects over the next five years. The funding will be distributed through the Local Roads Improvement Program, a reimbursement program that can cover up to half the cost of improving deteriorating roads. Wisconsin will also receive $200 million from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law to fund more than 150 projects improving the state's roads and bridges. A new program offered by St. Louis County Public Health and Aspirus St. Luke's has received a national award. According to a Northern News Now report, the Heart to Heart program received the honor from the National Association of County and City Health Officials. The program provides home visit services for pregnant women at risk for hypertensive disorders. Health officials say they're seeing a higher success rate of healthy pregnancies by removing barriers to health care services like access to reliable transportation. Prilly Circle in the Duluth Civic Center has been reopened after the clearing out of the City Hall encampment. According to a Fox 21 report, city crews had fenced the area off after clearing the encampment on Wednesday to restore the damaged grounds and reopened it on Thursday. The grassy area of the Civic Center is still fenced off as city officials say it needs serious restoration work. Mayor Roger Reinert says when it is reopened, it will once again be a public space accessible to anyone with the same permit rules. And that's what you need to know. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. The Dodgers are coming to town. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers open a four-game series against the L.A. Dodgers tonight in Milwaukee. Veteran lefty Clayton Kershaw on the mound for Los Angeles against the Brewers' Freddie Peralta. Yesterday, the crew got a look at lefty D.L. Hall. Back for the first time since going on the I.L. last April, manager Pat Murphy. Best he's thrown all year. My opinion that I've witnessed, thought he deserved better luck. I don't think he would have given up but one run. Thought he maintained it. I thought he was very good. The Brewers losing 4-3 to three to the Reds, snapping a five game winning streak for Milwaukee. NFL Packers back at practice this week. Then they head to Denver to play the Broncos Sunday night. The Badgers have a quarterback competition going on. Is it going to be Tyler Van Dyke or Braden Locke? These guys are battling right now and I think the advantage that Braden has is he has a year under his belt and a huge working knowledge and he is twice the player that he was last year. I just said that in the staff meeting the other day. He is vastly improved. That's offensive coordinator Phil Longo. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Bob Odenkirk and Bill Burr have been on their share of stages, but both will experience a first when they head to Broadway next spring. The actor-comedians will join Kieran Culkin on Broadway and Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. If you haven't seen the 1992 film written by David Mamet based on his play of the same title, it's worth a watch. The story is set in a cutthroat Chicago real estate office. Burr will be in the Dave Moss role, played by Ed Harris in the film. Culkin will play Richard Roma, who is portrayed by Al Pacino, and Odenkirk takes the role of Shelley Levine, the character played by Jack Lemon. That's one to see. If Taylor Sheridan has writer's cramp, he is great at hiding it. He's written yet another Yellowstone spinoff that's headed to the little screen. The show Madison will star Michelle Pfeiffer as the female lead. She will also executive produce. Madison follows a New York City family as they adjust to life in the West. Rumors are that Kurt Russell will also join the cast. Madison's previous title was 2024. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. For today, look for sunshine and a high near 80 degrees. Clear skies tonight, mid-50s. Sunshine near 80 again for Tuesday. Clear skies Tuesday night, 58. Mostly sunny, low 80s for Wednesday. Wednesday night, scattered showers and storms, 63. Currently 59 degrees. That's your WLAK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at lakeair.radio.